going on guys Mirko here with WordTech and today we are going to be doing another data structure for C++ but this time we're going to be doing binary search trees so rather than us doing a linear link list um, binary search trees are basically same thing it's a data structure except rather than us having a list of integers we are actually going to have a tree now there's many different trees there's AVL tree, 2 3 tree, 2 3 4 tree, red black tree, uh, a lot of different trees, but we are going to be focusing on binary search trees. And for the purpose of that, we are going to be knowing why these binary search trees are important. So, whenever we want to store data, these are the perfect, basically, the perfect uh, data structure for sorting out things. If you need to uh, sort in order, uh, or like uh, in sorted order, this is the perfect thing because. Basically what binary search tree is, uh, we're gonna sort the data from the, the smallest number to the left, the far left of the tree, and then the largest number on the far right. Now, today what we're just gonna do is some pretty simple stuff. We are going to be doing a function that will count nodes throughout the whole tree. Another one is going to be int largest, so we're gonna return the largest number inside of our binary search tree and then we're going to return the smallest now the reason why i just want to focus on these three functions today are because i think this is a key part of understanding binary search trees because really everything is super simple in these except removing but those are just different algorithms we'll get into later the reason why we want to understand the structures are because about efficiency. So you'll see later on when we get into the largest and smallest, there's going to be some different efficiency things that we don't actually have to do because our data is only going to be on the right subtree or on the left subtree. And we're going to see that later on. But to start things off, we are just going to do a very, very simple function that is going to count all the nodes in a binary search tree. So if you remember on a linear link list, we always started with if not head, but since this isn't a linear link list, we're going to be starting out with if not root. Root is basically going to be the head number inside of our list. The main guy, he's going to branch off to two different subtrees, the left tree and the right tree. So if we don't have a root, that means we don't have a binary search tree and we just want to get the heck out of there. Next, we are just going to be doing a simple counting function. We just want to count binary search trees, or we just want to count the number of nodes. So, to do that, it's simple. We're going to do our recursive return call just like we did on linear link and list. So, nodes 1 plus, we're going to be counting. Now, we have a left subtree and a right subtree, and basically, what we're going to just do is we are going to do a count nodes now as you can see over here on our node struct we have a left pointer and a right pointer the left pointer is going to be pointing to the left subtree and then we have the uh, right pointer pointing to the right subtree because all of these are going to be connected in some way so if we do count underscore nodes we're going to call it on the left subtree plus we count the nodes on the right side of the subtree and we call it on the right side and then boom that, that's literally it so what we're gonna do let me make sure my syntax is actually correct because it's not I don't know what I'm doing here so basically okay, this is the correct version so we're gonna add one to our count and then after that we're gonna go to the left subtree and then we're gonna go to the right subtree so next, all we just have to do is we have to call that function, which is going to be count nodes. Now, if you're going to see here, we're just calling it on root. If we pass in the root right or root left, then we're going to skip the root, but we want to start at the root of this to count how many nodes. So after that we save we want to compile
Okay, so we go back and compile. This time with hopefully no errors. We do our eight on out. And then as you can see, the tree contains eight items. This is our return number eight. If we count three, six, eight, perfectly fine. Now, if you can see over here how we have this laid out, we are gonna see here 34 is our level one and on the level one is always gonna be our root. 34 is up here and it's gonna branch off to 11 on the right, on the left side and then 41. Now, as you can see, there's no more numbers less than 11. So that means we know that 11 is our smallest, which you can see from the list here. And then 100 is our greatest. Now, now that you kind of see that, maybe you can visualize it. Now you're going to see why we can really be efficient when using binary search trees. So remember how we said the, the smallest or the largest is always going to be on the right subtree. And then the smallest is always going to be on the left subtree. Now the greatest, the great thing about this is we only have to go on the right side. That means we only need to traverse the right subtree. That means we can, rather than going all the way to the left, which we don't have to because we know the largest isn't going to be there. We just have to keep going right until we hit, if not root right, which means we're at the largest. And the great thing about that is we get logarithmic performance and that we do this super fast. So basically we need our basic, basic base case, if not root, we want to return zero. Our next one is going to be, if not root right. So basically if there isn't, another node to the right we want to return we want to return the data that we basically get so basically we're gonna go all the way to the end of this binary search tree all the way to the right if there isn't any more right we want to return that data that we catch which is going to be our largest. This return is going to get the largest. Next, it's just simple. We just want to recursively return until we get to the right. If I can type. Okay, so basically, as you can tell, you're probably wondering, well not, you're not wondering if you remember, but since we are only gonna have to look on the right side, there's no reason to make this left return, this left return call and use that memory and just make our chances of having a good logarithmic performance go wrong if we can just go all the way to the right because that's all we need to do. We just have to go straight to the right and everything will be perfectly fine. Once we go all the way to the right and there isn't another right, we know we hit this data, we know we hit the largest one, and we just have to simply return it. So let's do the now for the smallest. So if you can imagine, we're going to start everything off with if not root, which basically just means, like I said before, if we have a list. If not, or if we do have a list, then we want to go into the next if statement. Now, it's instead of root right, the smallest is always going to be on the left if not root left. We want to return our root arrow data, which basically means just return whatever data it is. And then now we just want to recursively go all the way to the right until we're finished. Sorry, all the way to the left until there isn't another left. If there's not another left, we know we hit the smallest one. Now that's that's the great thing about binary search trees. I absolutely love binary search trees. However, they do kind of get messed up when you start doing deleting algorithms, especially when you're not deleting from leaves. It kind of gets messed up, but it's honestly not too bad. So we are going to have a cat int num, which will catch the largest.
and then an int small which will catch the smallest as you can imagine now what we're gonna do is this small and then boom or right, let's make this a little bit more neat because it's not gonna be neat So let's remember now, the largest is going to be the first number, and then the smallest is going to be the second number. If we go through and compile that. We get a little error, but then we go through and compile that. Okay, so as we can see, the largest number is going to be 100 and the smallest number is going to be 1, which is actually exactly how we had it. So if we look over at this list, we'll see level 1 is 84, which is basically going to be the root. The root is going to be 84. So now, after 84, we branch off over to 1. And then now 1 is going to have over there to a 12 and then 12 is going to have 35 and 63 so as you guys can see this is a really great data structure to have just for in sorted order because you can tell exactly where all the data pieces are second smallest um, the smallest largest in order successor uh, the root everything it's a really great data structure um, definitely something you'll see in industry if you're doing C++ right now and it is a really great data structure, especially for recursion. Um, if you don't understand recursion, you're not going to be able to do binary search trees. I don't think I've really seen that many people do it iteratively. And you're crazy if you do. But if you can, um, all power to you. But guys, this has been Mirko with Word Tech. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe below. And I'll catch you guys in the next C++ video.